You know how I know you're Asian without you telling me that you're Asian? It's because some of these apply to you. Welcome everybody to the Hot Pop Boys. David and Andrew here. We have part two of our list for you today. We pulled 50 traits off of Reddit that identify you as Asian without you needing to say it. You, you can rank yourself low, middle, high. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. And of course, make sure you take note of how many of these you relate to. Point number one, AKA point number 26, Andrew. You like seafood flavored sauces, shrimp, fish, dashi, squid, scallops, oyster fermented shrimp sauce, whether in liquid form or a denser reduced format exo sauces even kimchi has bits of seafood in it no these are definitely those stinky or funky sauces that you would get made fun of especially if they spilled but i'll tell you this something like fish sauce is crucial to a lot of dishes but it just stinks when it's in its purest form so you have to mix it or cook it or do something else with it and obviously it becomes super delicious that's where you get all that salty umami and you know the funny thing is andrew when everybody's kids and is just eating like animal crackers and like things with like two flavors in it these asian sauces seem just like way too much od but when you get old Older and your flavor palette, you know, gets more advanced and you like cheeses and you like wines. That's when everybody starts to go, oh my gosh, you know, I had no idea Asian food was this complex and You mean when they become more sophisticated? It does it take the sophisticated man to appreciate an Asian palate? I don't know. Anyway, moving on, number 27, Andrew. Costco is your second home. Man. Uh, statistically speaking, Asians do love Costco. 12% of Costco customers are Asian American. Asian Americans only make up 6% of the U.S. population. So we're 2X represented, boy. I believe in a lot of West Coast states, Andrew, the most common customer profile in the entire state is an Asian woman that like makes over $120,000 a year or something like that. Like I, I saw that somewhere. Basically, Asians spend a lot of time at Costco and they spend a lot of money at Costco. Number 28, when you eat meat, you are often disappointed if it is not dark meat. Yes, when it comes to chicken, man, I'm telling you, man, I've been eating a lot of these fried chicken sandwiches around the city in New York City. And they always claim, oh, there's the best fried chicken. So there's the best Nashville hot. Well, it can't be the best if it's still using breast meat. I'm telling you, it's not valid. What if they're like, well, you know, it is the best using breast meat, but of course that's kind of a given because, well, we need the Watts to buy it. <laughs> Well, you know what? That's why I always appreciate the chicken sandwiches from the Chinese McDonald's and like Shanghai. Those are delicious. And lately, there are some chicken sandwiches out there using thigh meat, which I, I've liked. But trust me, thigh meat is better. It's just juicier. Let's just say this. It's just got more flavor. It's significantly different in today's profile. Number 29, Andrew. Instead of apologizing to you, your parents will just bring you fruit. Dude, the silent apology from the parents after they like you know, guy done yelling at you or they feel bad and then they just want to chop it up and then they'll just bring it to you while you're sitting there and you're feeling bad and then they're feeling bad but then you both cheer up over a, a plate of cantaloupe or apples. I, I will say this. I eat a lot more volume of cantaloupe and honeydew when I'm back at home. Dude, it's just like a automatic random fruit dispenser machine when you're at home. Like mom is just dropping it off. Uh, that, that's one of the best things of being back home. Uh, point number 30 all your friends are Asian or you have all Asian countries stamped in your passport. Yeah, so you're either a Asia file and you have yellow fever or you <laughs> legit are, are gonna be an honorary Asian amongst your friends if you're not Asian. But yeah, obviously if all your other friends are Asian, oftentimes you are Asian because that's who you feel comfortable right. with. Right, you're saying you could either be a second generation expat or weirdly enough, possibly a sex pad. Number 31, you like to drink just hot water and you just use a large volume of hot water for various uses. Bro, I still do this, but it's gotta be out of a clean mug. It can't have other residue of some coffee or Coca-Cola. It's not gonna taste right. All right, and also, you know, if you drink so much hot water in your house, you're gonna have a hot water dispenser now. Now, I feel like growing up, there wasn't always ones. There was like some people would have like the sparklets water jugs that would have the hot tab and the cold tab, but the hot wasn't really that hot. Yeah, no, and then it kind of went to the water boilers, and then now it's just the hot water dispensers from Zoji Rushi and other uh, kind of expensive brands. Moving on, number 32, you have the ability to do your schoolwork in loud, raucous environments. David, I mean, just judged on how many kids I see studying at the boba shop, yeah, I would assume that they can definitely do it. Maybe they're, maybe they're plugged in listening to lo-fi or something like that, but uh, I would say 
uh, especially when the smell of dinner is being cooked in the air and you're trying to study and then you're waiting for your mom to say dinner's ready, but you're like trying to study, but you really don't want to study because you're just waiting for her to- Oh man, there's all types of ginger and garlic and scallions and osmosis in the air. Um, Moving to on to number 33, Andrew. You must be Asian probably if your parents plan on moving in once you get older and they get older. Man, uh, yeah, I know a lot of families are still like this, which it still makes sense. And uh, our family is a little bit like this, but not with us. So shout out to our oldest sister. She's taking care of that for us. Uh, Number 34, you prefer your steak with white rice instead of potatoes. David, I got to ask you, man, really, given the choice, would you choose white rice or roasted potatoes? Honestly, be real. All right, listen. I would take white rice over bad potatoes any day. Okay. The what potatoes about, gotta be like what A-level. about seven out of ten potatoes? I still might take the, the white rice, man. Just regular white, not hey, fried man. rice. Man, like I said, Ikinari Steakhouse, the stand up alone steakhouse from Japan. I'm for me, I'm a big fan of Japanese steakhouses. That's actually my preferred steak. Japanese steakhouses are going to offer rice as a side. Number 35, you shower at night over showering in the morning. Is this an Asian thing or just a sensible thing? I thought this just made sense. It's sort of like taking off your shoes when you walk in the house, where it's just like, yeah, you don't want to go to sleep dirty, but you don't want to track dirt into your house. But uh, I could see taking like a quick, you know, two to five minute shower in the morning, you know, just to wake yourself up. But really, you need to shower at night. Number 36, your first car is guaranteed to either be a Honda Civic, Toyota Corolla, or a Camry and an Accord. Yeah, man. And this is especially growing up in the 90s and the 2000s, you know, where basically uh, the every Asian family had a Camry at some point. That was like the best selling car by far. Obviously, now I think with the Korean brands getting better with the Kias and, and the Hyundais, um, I think more of those cars are also family cars. But man, I would tell you, almost guaranteed you were going to inherit a Camry. And you probably were going to try to do some sort of modification to it. Uh, that you didn't really need to, whether it's the stereo system or just trying to do something to it. Obviously, it depends on what car you get. Number 37, always having a cup of noodles or instant noodle bowls around. Yeah, man. I mean, I think that instant noodles are are just a part of culture, but I I will say this. I think a lot of people have instant noodles in their house, a lot of non-Asians, but are they souping it up? No. Are they making the deluxe actually take a long time version is very Asian. Right, like treating instant noodles like they're like a legit, like, you know, pasta or noodle, I guess. Right, cutting up green scallions, uh, getting your ham or your cheese or your spam or your et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I also think Korean food had a play in this because a a lot of their, like, you know, uh, most like popular dishes also use instant noodles. So now like people are like almost making like kimchi jjigae like with the, with the, or the army stew with it. Like, like, like an express version. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Number 38, Andrew, you work some type of job when you were very young that you would probably deserve to get paid for. So this is like doing a crazy amount of yard work when you're young. You know, some people work at their parents' restaurant when they're like 12 years old taking orders. Some people do this. Some people do that. I mean, it's just like, the concept of working when you're really young is acceptable. Yeah, I feel like parents, when they're having you work, it's almost like not even called work. You're just like being part of the family. Yeah, you're just like, helping out the family's mission of like whatever project the family. They're trying just to trying to make a living and trying to get things done here, and they don't have, feel bad about using up oh, your time. When we you're had a kid. we had friends that were working on their parents' like catering truck when they're like 13 years well, old. Well, literally at that point, if your parents are immigrants, right, and they're just trying to make it in life. Really, what to them is like using up your Saturday and Sunday. They're like, yeah, what are you going to do with that time anyways? Like, you are just a kid. There is nothing more productive you can do than to help us run the business. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I do remember that this is kind of like a common immigrant thing, Andrew, because one time we were in Alphabet City in Manhattan, which is a part of Manhattan, if you guys don't know. And I remember um, there was this Arab family running a bodega. And the kid who checked us out was like definitely like 12 years old. He was young. He was young. He was helping out the family. He was helping out the family. Number 39, if you like to sleep on the ground or you're okay with sleeping on very thin mats. Yo, man, uh, I rem- one of my fondest core memories of staying at our aunt and uncle's house in Hong Kong was that their mattress was like hard. The one that, uh, the guest bedroom. And it was like, I remember trying to jump on it and you just hit it and you go boom. And you're just like, whoa, like I'm not used to this because it was just like a block of foam. 
Yeah, I mean, Asians like to sleep traditionally on kind of like hard mats. Whether, you know, you're talking about tatami or like a bed of anything, I don't know. Number 40, Andrew, you treat a new Asian grocery store opening up in your neighborhood like it's an exclusive sneaker drop. Well, if you think of what sneakers means to resellers or hype beasts, and then the analogy is that that is what a brand new Asian supermarket means to Asian moms, man. You will get, you're gonna see new items, you're gonna see new prices, they're gonna have sales, yeah. all these new <laughs> gadgets, bro. They're gonna yo, bum rush the yo, doors. It's almost like you, of course you wanna check it out because your game map, and especially for your parents, their game map of their world just expanded a little bit. And also they're gonna be racing their friends. They're gonna be talking about with their friends. Like, oh, you're oh. going to the new opening, like the 99 Ranch right. is opening. We know, I know when Every the 99 Ranch opened a few miles from our house, that was crazy. Everybody gonna bump into everybody from the community there. Oh yeah. Oh, I don't wanna go there. I don't wanna bump into Mrs. Uh, Silly. <laughs> Number 41, you feel like it's second nature to soup up your rice with eggs and soy sauce and possibly spam. Okay, I will say this. Growing up, I did have a non-Asian neighbor who loved the rice with just soy sauce. And now, regard that that was like he would he would not even eat the dinner that my mom was serving. He would literally just eat rice and soy sauce. But yeah, obviously nowadays, if all you can afford is eggs, soy sauce, and rice, I mean you're eating it. No, the poor man's fried rice. Um, Pan Asian. Number 42, you feel obligated to bring oranges and fruit to someone that you're visiting, especially older and more traditional people. Yeah, I mean, this is something that I had to learn uh, later in life when I started visiting people or even when we were visiting well, just grandma, being, grandpa. Well, more like independent active members of the family, right? I mean, I think that this is why like there's such expensive versions of fruit. Like, you know how like with Japanese spots, you can get like a $10 for like 10 grapes or something like that. But man, those grapes... They're delicious, but they're not worth a dollar a piece. Or maybe that's why they designed those newly, like the Korean pears that are really expensive too. Like they're really high quality and really good. But like that, those are like worthy of bringing to a esteemed individual's house. For sure. Hey man, fruit got levels to it. A lot of people, don't, don't be tricked by American produce. Fruit got levels. Number 43, Andrew. Cold seaweed, cold cucumbers. These just sound tasty to you. Man. I don't know, pickled or non-pickled or just smashed up and then thrown with some vinegar and chilled. Um, obviously, I think that these are probably, when you're talking about seaweedy and cucumbers, they're probably eaten more in like East Asian countries. Uh, but like cold seaweed salad, obviously very Japanese and stuff like that. Number 44, if you still look the same as you did when you were a kid, baby face. Man, you know what's funny? I feel like between us two, when people look at our baby photos, they say I look more like how I did when I was like 10. Like, no, I yeah. have not changed much. No, no, you are like frozen in time. Dude, this is how I used to look. I'll pop up a picture right now. Like I don't look that different. Yeah, I would say you look as much as you possibly could like you did when you were a kid without it almost being like Benjamin Button. Number 45, if you have had somebody look at your face and pull their eyelids back before. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah of course you're asian if this happened because these are basically times when other people are making fun of you for being asian so yeah obviously if you got called any of the other bad names on yeah this we list, don't have to say some of the bad ones but we can terms. say bruce lee jackie chan lucy Liu, Sai. uh there's cetera, ones cetera, that everybody. rhyme with link and uh juke and uh pip you know i mean you know the bad ones. And Mipper led. Number 46, if you have ever eaten and enjoyed a bitter melon dish in your life or possibly another type of bitter rare vegetable like sadao that is in Cambodian cooking. Bro, ask your American friend if they even know what bitter melon is. Ask them. Oh yeah, and by the way, the Cambodian sadao, that like bitter flower salad. The bitter bomb. Is crazy. I, that was something I never had before. Shout out to Cambodian cooking for introducing me to a whole different level of bitterness. But just like Pan-Asian wise, like every culture got something that's just bitter that people are like, yo, what, why, why would you make it taste that way? But it's for medicinal purposes. It's for health. It's just like people just learn to enjoy the bitterness. Yo, to this day, David, can you rock with bitter melon? Honestly. Man, I've had it, I would say 10% of the time where I was like, okay, I can enjoy this. But 90% of the time, even including at restaurants, I'm not a big fan. I think you truly become an old Asian person when you 
enjoy bitter melon. Yeah, when your taste buds are so hardened that it takes something intensely bitter to like cut through and make you feel something. Number 47, Andrew, you did some sort of additional schooling to make you smarter, whether that's Kumon, extra SAT prep classes, Saturday school, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, man, definitely had some fond memories. I'm sure a lot of people out there could agree. You know, this one time I didn't go to a Kumon or anything, but mom sent me to summer school of the year up at public school. So I was in a class with a bunch of people who had failed their year before and they were trying to make up with it at summer school, but I was trying to get ahead. But I don't know if that plan really worked because it was still really easy. <laughs> It was hey, 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 but we had pretty interesting uh, uh, recesses, and uh, you know, I made some made some interesting friends back Yo, then. Yo, that's pretty funny to put you with the really wild, crazy kids from like two or three years up. Yo, let's just say there was some really good beats being made on the desk with the. Number 48, your parents do not really dance unless they're Filipino, but if they do dance a style, it's usually something like ballroom dancing. Yes. Uh, you know, let's just say Asian parents for the most part, maybe unless they're Filipino and parents of like a TikTok dancer, they don't really know how to get like jiggy with it. You know, they just know like the classy, like wedding dances that they did, you know, or the ones like sometimes at karaoke, they just might just sway back and forth or at church, you know. Number 49, Andrew, everything that makes a dessert good leads back to this description. Oh yeah. Hmm. Good. Not too sweet. Dude. I think I just said that like three days ago. I was just like, oh man, I like, man, it's light. It's not too sweet. Yeah. I mean, I really like those Asian wedding cakes with the melon on it and like this very, very light white cream. You cannot find it anywhere else. Yeah. But you know, what's funny when it comes to chocolate, I like it sweet. I like my chocolate stuff sweet. Number 50, the second you get home, you change into your home clothes, which is usually raggedy old t-shirts and sweatpants that are extremely soft from being washed so many times. Wow, this is a pretty specific one, but man, I remember some of, the, some of those hand-me-down shirts were super soft. I don't know what they were making those shirts out of at that time. They weren't some of these rough, <laughs> gilded ones. You know, they were just, they got, and then they got the little cotton balls on it, and they were usually like baseball t-shirts. Yeah, well, I think it's like, for some reason, like more, like, comfortable to just dress sort of like a, like a villager when you're in your house. And they said that, yeah, you just gotta go straight to boxers if you're OG grandpa style the second you get in the door. Dude, do that today. So don't, don't like when, if it's just me and David in the apartment, man, we, we might not be wearing the full outfits. <laughs> <laughs> Number 51, you know of every boba shop in a five mile radius. Now, to be fair, nowadays, Andrew, there are more non-Asian boba fanatics. Yeah, but but you can generally guess that, especially because the most boba shops are Asian owned, that they're gonna have like an Asian demographic because it's an Asian product too. I'm not saying everybody at a boba shop is Asian, but I'm just saying probably most people at a boba shop are gonna be Asian. So probably you know the only five percent of the boba shops in America, maybe ten, are are majority not Asian. Number fifty two, Andrew. This is a little bit of a dark one to end on, but it is a deep cut one that I do agree with. You or someone you knew had a very serious gambling issue, but they were gambling in hopes that they would get rich and not for fun. Yeah, I mean, I would say Asians generally, when they gamble, they look to make money and not, they don't just do it for fun. They almost look at it like as possibly like income. Yeah, and to be honest, unfortunately, I have heard that it tore apart a lot of families, you know, and, and yeah, it was not good for them. So obviously, you know, it's like a risky thing, but yeah, it is kind of part of Asian culture. I mean, even Mahjong is, is gambling. Yeah, I don't know why it is, to be honest, like, because a lot of cultures gamble, but, like, for Asians, they just approach it differently. I don't Yo, know. I, I kind of want to see a statistic on, like, how rich Asian families got from gambling. Yeah, Like, because like, I, <laughs> I know some horror stories, but I don't know the good stories. No, it'll be like an Asian family either doesn't gamble at all. That's, like, our family. Or they just go in hard to the point where they're getting comped in Vegas and stuff like that. But, I listen, guys. If you are in a state with a high Asian population, go to your local casino and tell me who is disproportionately represented there. I would not be surprised if the answer is Asian. Man, you want to say Asians love Costco. Asians love the casino. All right, you guys, that does it for how to tell if you're Asian without telling me your Asian list. Andrew, that was actually a fun trip down memory lane. I actually had thought of a lot of stuff while we were going through that list. 
that I hadn't thought of in a while. Yeah, man. And I, again, like doing these lists are fun because, you know, I obviously a lot of different Asian cultures have their nuances and they have their differences. Um, but these things kind of sometimes feel like they unite people, you know, and also they're a reminder to tell all the other people out there, like how Asian you are. Now for me, obviously I don't hit 50 out of 50 on these because I'm, I'm like still like second generation, like born in America, kind of Americanized, but I, I respect all of it, but maybe some of it, David, I would not even want to keep. Yeah. I'm not saying that you should, uh, really aspire for a hundred out of a hundred on all of these points, to be honest, but it no disrespect if you yeah. do, but it's just like not necessary. Yeah. It's just a reality of our community. Yeah. Anyways, guys, thank you so much. Let us know in the comments down below what you think about the list. Uh, that was part two. Let uh, us know anything that we left off. Like we said, we pulled it from Reddit. You know, we pulled the ones that we thought we related to. And I understand not everybody's going to relate to 50 out of 50 of these or have even heard of these. But please let us know your comments, your suggestions. You know, let us know if you related to any of them in the comment section below. All right, everybody. Thank you, and until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.